Ladies and gentlemen, wow, this is crazy. We were not expecting this many people in the room. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's really cool, but that's also gonna be a challenge because we're gonna do a workshop and workshopping is pretty difficult with uh, more than 100 people. But we're gonna pull it off. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Dennis. This is my colleague, Tiago. We are with MakerDAO um, and I'm not gonna talk much about what we do because we don't have time for that. Um, we are here today to solve some DAO governance challenges that are real. So like uh, we selected four challenges from friends from the Web3 space that are dealing with some problems. Um, and we're gonna try and find some, uh, some inspiration for that. And another goal is to get some of you uh, more familiar with uh, design thinking uh, methodologies because it's a really powerful way of innovating. We actually uh, did a workshop at, uh, at DevConnect uh, earlier this year in Amsterdam, and that was like a different workshop. It was like a fully fledged design sprint with a small group. Um, that's what we had in mind for today, but we actually, uh, yeah, we decided to switch it up a little bit. Um, a little bit of context, a design sprint is usually like a, a, a workshop, quite an intense workshop, multiple days, small team, where you basically, um, you innovate and you, you, you validate ideas. So you create a concept and validate it without actually building anything, like without writing a single line of code. And I think that's uh, something that, um, yeah, the, the notion of innovating without building is something that uh, we should embrace as a space. So for those who haven't heard about design thinking, design sprint, this might be a good first uh, experience for you. Um, what we're going to do today, we have one hour and 40 minutes and we're going to guide you through a, a very intense process. Uh, the, the time is our biggest enemy today. We're going to uh, do divergent and convergent thinking. So basically, initially we're going to do a, a brain dump um, where we try and get as much uh, feedback and no ideas and inspiration um, on the table as possible. And then we're going to do a voting exercise to create some kind of abstraction. And then we're going to do that again, but then for creating a solution. Um, the agenda is, um, we have four challenge owners from various DAOs uh, in the room. They're going to take five minutes to present their, um, um, their challenge and give some context. And then we're basically going to break up. Some of the tables in this room are going to be focusing on those challenges. Um, so we're going to do some kind of team formation. If you don't feel like actively participating, that's completely fine. I mean, that's actually welcome because we have way too many people. So if you just want to listen in, <laughs> No hard feelings. If you just want to listen in and just walk around, please feel free to do so. If you want to commit to participating, please participate and be here for the full two hours. Um, yeah, this is what I just mentioned. Let's just uh, have a look at the challenges and then we're going to do, uh, yeah, then we're going to switch to the ideation process. And I'd like to welcome uh, Shelby and Abby from the Radical team. Hi guys, my name's Abby. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm the head of community and governance at Radical, and I sit on the board of the Radical Foundation. For those who don't know Radical, Radical is basically a protocol ecosystem that's based uh, building decentralized collaboration tools for developers building decentralized technologies. Um, and so like the TLDR is decentralized GitHub, but it's a lot more things than that as well. Um, and so Radical has been on a journey for the last <laughs> year or two, um, and we've been slowly progressively decentralizing um, uh, in our efforts to become um, like a truly open source, uh, free and open source, self-sustaining, community owned and operated free and open source project, uh, free and open source. I said twice, but you get the picture. Um, and so over the last year, um, two years, uh, we made a successful transition from a startup to um, a foundation. Um, and we launched uh, our governance token, RAD, and we became a DAO. Um, but if everybody here is, has experience with DAOs, you know that becoming a DAO <laughs> doesn't just happen when you technically decentralize. There's a lot of social and political decentralization that comes along with that. So now we're on our next chapter, um, the first of many, um, which is furthering our transition to the DAO by dissolving our foundation council, which currently manages all of our project development, um, our core teams that are contributing to maintaining the radical stack um, and replacing that with decentralized entities that uh, our contributors um, run and operate themselves um, and restructuring our governance process along the way. 
There's a lot more of this on Discourse if you want to learn more, radical.community. Um, but basically, our goal is to create a decentralized organization that can manage all of our project development within the DAO uh, without relying on the intermediary of a foundation council. Um, and in that process, uh, steward the emergence of other organizations within the Radical DAO ecosystem um, by distributing ownership, influence, um, and uh, supporting you know, the generation of more decentralized uh, governed entities that all are steward and funded by our Radical Treasury. Wow, okay, so that's the transition. <laughs> so our challenge, um, which is something that we've been thinking about in this transition, we have four work streams, right? One is the actual org design. So how do you actually build an organization for our contributors to participate in? The second is DAO tooling. What are the best tools that we can be using to actually you know, steward this decentralization process? And then the last two are what we're gonna be talking about today, which is the distribution of ownership and the distribution of influence. So I think everybody knows that uh, token voting uh, governance, uh, governed DAOs are pretty plutocratic right now, if not entirely plutocratic, including radical, um, and we're trying to change that. So first, we're trying to distribute ownership in a way that better supports the transition of uh, our project to something more member-based, more um, uh, with highly diverse stakeholder governance. Um, that's not plutocratic, has more fair and equitable qualities, and can better support the long-term sustainability of the project. But we think that that's not possible without actually introducing a non-financialized governance layer, which we call influence. So our challenge is about how do we effectively distribute influence and ownership as separate financialized governing power, which is tokens, and non-financialized power, which is who knows what, um, and how do we distribute that amongst active contributors of the DAO to better support the transition of our governance structure to something static and plutocratic to something dynamic and member-based and more fair and equitable. So, cool. Thanks. So Shelby is right here, so we'll be walking around with um, our challenge and you can ask us any questions along the way. Thanks. See, that's over three minutes. That's really impressive. <laughs> You can tell that she's done this before. Thanks a lot, Abby. Um, it's important that you take note of the challenges because the idea is that every table picks a challenge to focus on. And then some of you that might be interested in actively participating, they, you really focus on that challenge. So keep that in mind. Next up, we have uh, Peyton from MakerDAO. Um, yeah, let's see. let's see. We have a lot of problems at MakerDAO. A lot of challenges that can be solved. So let's hand it over to Peyton. Hi, uh, my name is Peyton. I go by Pros11 online, and I am one of Maker's governance facilitators. Uh, yeah, you might have heard of Maker. You've probably heard of Dai. I bet in this room we're probably batting better than average. Uh, but I guess our problem with with governance, right? Uh, you'll you'll hear about it in tweets. You'll see about it in news articles. Uh, but it has to happen all the time, right? Whether someone's watching or or I guess whether everyone's watching or just a few people are watching, uh, governance is there, governance is a risk. That kind of transitions into the workforce, which is this whole separate thing that intertwines with governance and is a part of it, yet uh, is entirely separate as well. So you might have read the articles of Maker, you might have seen uh, some bits of Rune's grand plan or seen Banteg tweet about how Dai's going to lose its peg or what have you. but. Uh, Basically, uh, fundamentally, I would like to argue that the problem that Rune is pitching to try to solve is how might we reallocate the workforce to be more efficient? And I don't think this is a problem that you have to be at the size of MakerDAO to uh, encounter. I think it's fundamentally a problem of scaling. Every DAO starts out with this really awesome problem, which is we have a very cool solution and not enough people know about it. So what do you do? You start ramping up. You start bringing people into the workforce and giving them jobs, making them contributors, having them, uh, you know, one way or another, uh, be a part of your ecosystem. And before too long, you realize, okay, well, maybe our problem isn't that we don't have enough people who know about our system now. Maybe our problem is that the way we have organized in, in an alternative structure, right, that uh, typically bucks hierarchy and, and doesn't have uh, a lot of direct reporting, how do we take that and actually make sure that we are getting the value of all the talented individuals that have joined the uh, organization? So when I like to approach this problem, I, I think it's important to think about two sides because it's really obvious from the DAO side why you might want a more efficient workforce, right? Just like every corporation wants to squeeze out the most profit, your DAO is going to want to take a look at your workforce and say, all right, how can we get these people? Uh, to, to reach their potential and to give that value to us. But you also have to think about it from the worker side. 
workers and DAOs are incredibly autonomous, right? The, if they don't want to be there, they'll, they'll find something else to do. There's plenty of money in the Web3 ecosystem. And uh, yeah, if you're not thinking about them when you're trying to solve this problem, you're, you're going to fall short. Uh, so I want to put in a little plug about burnout because I think that's a problem with, with tech, with uh, DAOs, with uh, our industry at, at large. Uh, but studies have shown that like the key thing you can do to prevent burnout with an organization is to make sure people feel valued, to make sure that their work is being appreciated. And the only way that people are going to appreciate their work is if they feel like they are making an impact. So the challenge is as you grow, as you scale, how do you make sure that the talent you have is being properly utilized? Because whether it's a treasury or intellectual property, if you have a resource and you're not constantly checking in, making sure that you're getting the most out of it, uh, you're going to lose efficiency. You're going to lose the battle to entropy. And, uh, you know, a DAO can die. Uh, many DAOs have died. Uh, I would not like to be one of them, and I would certainly not like to be the governance facilitator if the DAO were to die. <laughs> So uh, maybe you can help me today and we can think about how can we make our workforce reallocation uh, be the most efficient way, keeping in mind that there are two distinct sides we need to think about, the worker and the DAO itself. Thanks. Thank you very much, Peyton. That was really good. If there's anyone at Maker who is in, in sync, in tune with what's happening at the DAO, it's Peyton. So if you can, if any of you can somehow give some kind of inspiration or new perspective on this problem that could be really actually really impactful because there's actually a lot of maker people in the room. So uh, <laughs> I hope you can contribute to this uh, challenge that we're facing. Moving on to the third challenge, which is uh, brought forward by Zaku from Coordinate. Thanks, Diego. Thanks everybody. So I am indeed Zach uh, from Coordinate. And for those that don't know, Coordinate it's actually a tool to help uh, employees feel, or employees, to, uh, can, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, good thing I didn't say that. Uh, to help contributors to a DAO feel more uh, appreciated and also compensated. So quickly, the way that Coordinate works is um, in a circle of contributors, they all have 100 give tokens. And you can give to other people according to the value that you've seen them add over some period of time. And then whatever percentage of the total amount of give tokens you get, you get that percentage of the budget, right? So instead of saying, here's our budget for coordinators, it's 100,000 and I'm the, the people ops person and I choose you get this much and this much, you put the whole pile in the middle of the table and people basically allocate it to each other in a decentralized way. Um, and so the idea is to get closer to value in equals value out. Right, those contributors that are just like really crushing it and everyone's really appreciating, here's your chance to appreciate them with payment. Um, and also write notes to them and tell them about why you appreciate what they're doing. And then it creates this social graph so everyone can see who's adding value and what they're doing. So it also helps a lot with sense making in the DAO. That said, um, so in my previous company, this is the way that we paid each other for like all seven years. And we always said that the conversation is actually more valuable than the allocation itself. Because as we were paying each other, we were like, here's what you did that was awesome. Here's what you could do better. Um, at Coordinate, one of the challenges that we have is that you have this distribution, and so everyone's, and it's all transparent, and you can see like, oh wow, Sally got this much, and wait, why did she get that much more than me? And why did Steve give this much to Camille? And wait, what's, what's going on, right? Um, and, and so the sense-making part, and really understanding, especially like as a DAO, like what do we value? Is this person getting more because they're more public in their role? Or is it because what they're doing is super valuable? Like, are we allocating according to what we really think is in line with the mission that we're trying to achieve? And so the question really is like, how do we asynchronously do sense making? Because it's just not practical to say we're going to have our coordinate retro and all 40 people are going to meet and on Zoom, we're all going to talk about what happened. Um, we are doing lots of MVPs with like small groups and pulse surveys and things like this, but there's a lot of issues in DAOs when they get sensitive and, you know, if you just are writing on Discord, like that encourages a very certain kind of conversation. It's obviously like we are not evolved to be text-based communicators. All, most of our communication is nonverbal and now we're trying to do this through screens around really sensitive topics, especially in Coordinate's case around like compensation, which gets into 
how people feel valued. And, you know, these are like really hot topics. And there's a lot more, I'm sure, in, in all the DAOs you're a part of. And so how can we address these really sensitive and nuanced topics and do sense making in an asynchronous, decentralized way? Um, you know, obviously, like coming together as a team is the best way, but that's not usually possible. Um, so, yeah, this is the sticky problem that, that we're going to be talking about. Thanks, Zach. Interesting stuff. And I think for some of us, we can relate. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's move on to the fourth challenge uh, posed by Patricia from Euler Finance. I always said Euler Finance, but it's actually Euler. So I've heard. So, uh, yeah, let's give her a hand and uh, let's hear what she has to say. Hey guys, so yeah, I'm from Euler Finance. It's pronounced as Euler, just as Euler. Uh, it's not called Yola, it's, it's wrong. <laughs> so we have a protocol uh, that nobody even knows how to pronounce the name, and that kind of reflects the, t the governance problems we're currently facing, which is like low community engagement because the product itself is less well known, and at the same time, it's highly technical. So Euler Finance is a lending and borrowing protocol. So you can think of us as uh, similar to Aave, but way more complex with a way more functionality building. And the code is just like extremely uh, difficult to understand for an average technical person. Um, so the problem we're currently facing is basically uh, like we launched around, around like uh, November last year. So right before like everything crashed basically. And we did a token launch about uh, in, in May. Um, that, that was like when the market was like pretty bad. And we didn't do a public token launch. We did like the, the token sales with the VCs. So from that side, it's like there's very little people to be fair that are have vested interest within the protocol. And a lot of the technical people who are trying to onboard right now, they do not have a vested interest within the protocol. They do not have the token. Uh, at the same time, uh, the thing uh, we have with the governance is like we're trying to have the governance to decide on the um, parameters of the protocol, such as like lending and borrowing factors. We thought that would be the best way to decentralize the protocol to make it really permissionless uh, lending and borrowing and listing uh, for assets to be collateral. However, not, what we realize is that not everyone have that knowledge to be calculating collateral factors. A lot of people within our community that are most active have very little tokens at the same time, do not have the knowledge to be calculating those risk parameters, and do not have the knowledge to be participating within the, uh, in the discussion. So that's like the main problem we're facing is that where we, we're trying to lead the governance uh, to be like and what the governance is currently at. Um, so the problem that we're try like I'm presenting today, and uh, the problem that I'm trying to ask you all to contribute and help me to solve, is how can we solve uh, the community engagement problem within a highly technical protocol community? Uh, think about Euler as a protocol, a baby protocol has a baby governance. Everything is very primitive. The very little uh, people have vested interest, and people like outside of the community or even within the community cannot even pronounce the name of the protocol. <laughs> so that, that's a problem we're currently facing. And I think it's a problem that exists uh, across a lot of like uh, other technical protocols, other DeFi protocols. And I think it's something that in general, how do we encourage people that currently do not have the knowledge to be participating and at the same time encourage those who have the knowledge to be participating in the governance and be contributing. So, yeah. awesome. Thank you, Patricia. Cool. So, as I said, we have four really, uh, we have real governance challenges that we're gonna that we're gonna focus on today. Um, what we had in mind is that every table can pick their own uh, challenge, but maybe we need to do it a bit smarter because we only have a bunch of facilitators and we can't really have them walk around the whole room. So I'm just going to MacGyver this if I have the mandate. I would say I'm just going to point out a few tables and a number. And if you really want to join a particular challenge, and you can just move to the table. But otherwise, I would suggest you just stay where you are and try to share your input. The whole goal is to cross-pollinate, right? I think you all have different perspectives, different uh, uh, work experience. And I'm really curious what's uh, going to come out of that. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign these four tables, so this row, to the radical challenge because we have two radical facilitators. I think they can handle this, this row of four tables. Then we have um, these three, I would say. I would assign them to Patricia. So this, this, and this. So that is challenge number four. And that is challenge number uh, one. Sorry, yeah. Okay, and then we have one, two, three, four. That's maker. One, two, three, four. So you're going to be talking about uh, the second challenge. And then we have one, two, three. That's going to be coordinate. Does that make sense? Do you all know which challenge you, you, uh, you're assigned with, your table? And again, if you really want to join a particular challenge, feel free to move around and try and, and organize. I'm going to give you a few minutes for it. In the meantime, I'm just going to continue talking, just to explain what we have in mind. Um, once again, we have an ideation um, process that we're going to guide you through. We have a bunch of uh, materials on your table, and you're going to need that to uh, do the ideation. Let's take two minutes to organize yourselves, and then we're going to just continue. All right, everyone, we're at time. And I just want to make sure that uh, we're not uh, mixing up stuff. So I'm, can I have everyone's attention, please? Time is at the essence. Thank you very much. I'm going to walk past each of the table, and I want you to shout which challenge number you are working on, just to make sure we're on the same page. Three, two, one. One. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, this is all radical. Three, two, one. Four. So you are... Uh, Euler Finance. And that one also. Okay, so we actually have two tables, Euler Finance, right? Because these, what are you working on? Two, that's Maker, right? And you? Maker, Maker, and Maker. And over there, three and three. Okay, so we actually have two tables for Zach, two tables for Patricia. We have three tables for Peyton, for Maker, and we have four tables for Radical. That's correct, right? Awesome. Then I think we're ready to go. We're going to have the, the inner facilitators, right? the challenge owners, they're going to be at your tables uh, and they're going to be available for uh, helping with the ideation because we actually briefed them a little bit, but also to give more challenge on the, on the yeah, more context about the challenge. Um, I'm going to hand the mic over to my colleague, Tiago, and we're going to talk about the ideation uh, practices. Please, uh, please pay attention because, yeah, we're going to have to do this uh, asynchronously now, so... Let's get it, Tiago. All right, so this is the fun part, brainstorming. Uh, just a bit of recap. So you're gonna follow this process of div divergent and conversion ticking. So first we come up, you, you come up with as many ideas as possible, literally open your brain. Then you're gonna have one, one voting process called democracy. So you need to select uh, the most likable ideas. Uh, then you, so this, this will be around the opportunity area. And then we're going to do this loop again, diverging, but hopefully come up already with a more uh, craft solution. And we're going to convert again using the democracy, hopefully find a, a solution that we are all happy with in, with the, in your table. Um, so we, a lot of people, we move around, so maybe just take five minutes to introduce yourself. You don't need to tell the story of your life, just the your name, where you work, uh, and why you joined this uh, workshop. Just take five minutes to, within your group, introduce yourself, give a little round. One minute per each, just uh, real quick. Yeah. Now, 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 so now just uh, within your group, just uh, give a round of introductions. That's it, then, then, we'll, then we'll move on. Just make sure we know each other, we get along. Hope everyone know each other now a bit a bit better within your group. Uh, we're gonna start the first exercise. Uh, yeah, so so this is just a quick way to download your brains. It's a brain dump. Uh, it's, it's a conversation starter. Uh, so the first exercise, uh, there are uh, blank sheets on your table. Uh, please just use one or two, divide into uh, three columns, and then write "I like," "I wish," and "I wonder." Uh, and there we will, everyone will be putting posters on each column. Uh, so in the I like column, so this will be 
something that inspires you, something that is, you already know. These are existing, existing solutions. Uh, yeah, so just some references on the I wish. Uh, yeah, so based on these existing solutions, maybe there's something that could be improved. Uh, maybe there are new features that you thought out. Uh, so that will be on the I wish uh, column. And then finally, we have the I wonder column. Uh, so this will be uh, solutions that don't exist uh, just yet. So it will be more your future vision. Uh, you can free your brain a bit more. Uh, maybe you wonder if this is feasible, this be possible. Maybe you do a bit of reflection about any uh, unintended consequences. Um, yeah, so it's more the, the future scenarios. Um, again, so three columns. I like, I wish, I wonder. One or two blank sheets per Per table, you, you, so you're going to give ourselves uh, eight minutes for this exercise. No, uh, do it uh, introspectively in silence, uh, unless you want to explain what you mean or someone don't understand. Explain to your table. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's get started. Eight minutes. Good luck. I still hear a lot of talking. I really suggest doing it in silence. Respect the process, my friends. Stick to the process. The purpose is to just get a download of everyone's brain based on their perspective and their experience. Stop talking, start writing. Make sure to add them to the um, sheets immediately so you prevent people from uh, writing down duplicates. The goal is to get as many post-its on that sheet per table. So write them down, put them on the sheet, and we're going to do a voting exercise per table afterwards. We are almost at half time. Maybe there's anything in particular, like something that you know of, some experience that is quite unique to you, that might be um, a source of inspiration for the others on your table. All right. I see many post-its on the table. Too many. Too much information to download in those brains, I can see. All right, all right. So, no worry, it's not a, we don't need perfection. We just need some, uh, we, just, we just needed some information to get the conversation started. Uh, now, of course, I'm sure there are different uh, solutions on the table, so we need to align our brains within your own groups. So we have this uh, system that's called dot democracy. Uh, so dot democracy is just a way uh, to help you vote uh, on the most likable uh, items that you have on the table. Just just find some alignment within your own group. So you'll have uh, five minutes. I know you are short on Sharpies, but uh, yeah, share, share your pens around. Use your pens to to place three dots, uh, three dots per person and per column on your on your most likable items. Uh, and if there are maybe there are similar items, try to cluster them a little bit, um, and uh, yeah, see what's the the spirit in your table. See what uh, what your what your group like the most. So let's uh, yeah, let's take five minutes to vote. Again, three three dots per person per per column. Okay, everyone, please make sure that you just look at what's on the table and place those dots. We're going to do discussion afterwards. We have five minutes. Remember, no cheating. Three dots per person per column. You can put multiple dots on one item if you'd like. We have about two minutes remaining. Make sure you use your votes. We want to have a nice heat map of where the most interesting opportunity areas are. Last, uh, last uh, 20 seconds. So for now, the goal is just to make sure you have an alignment within your table in terms of opportunity area. We'll have time to, to this for the discussion. All right, all right. I know, I know you're already ahead of the game in the discussion part, so that's good. Uh, so just make sure you look again to the post-its you have on the table. Make sure you look at the you find the heat map, you, you find the ones that uh, w the ones with the most dots. Uh, and again, this is not to come up with a solution just yet. Try to focus on the opportunity areas for the time being. So let's uh, 
has given us eight minutes just to find the right opportunity area. So just to clarify, it, you don't need to look at all the post-its, just look at the post-its with the most dots. Those, those are the ones we are converging at the moment. So to look at the post with the most dots, those, those are the ones where your brain should be focused on. And for now, it's just opportunity areas. We'll have another session based on solutions. All right, folks, we have about five minutes left. And the aim is that after five minutes, within your table, you have a good sense of where the opportunity is. So just have a bunch of post-its that are your favorites. That's super important. All right, last one more minute for the, to find the right opportunity area. Try to converge in one. Just one single opportunity area. Again, rely on your facilitators. They are the gov they are governance experts. They know the challenge more more than anyone. All right. So, less is aside. I know mo most of you are freestyling, going with your own methods, and that's totally fine. But uh, I mean, this is also a good one. So it's called uh, Crazy Eight. So basically, yeah, you. Uh, so b uh, based on the opportunity area that your table selected, uh, we're going to come up with we call it crazy eight solutions. So you can either draw or uh, or write whatever is easy for you to 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 depict the solution. So this is more a concept creation. Um, you can go a bit uh, wild in nonsense, but uh, we, we are trying to diverge as much as uh, possible. But again, focus on the challenge, focus on the opportunity area, try to stick to one, meet, one minute uh, per post-it, one idea per post-it. And since we are many groups, maybe try to come up, have uh, two, two, two sheets on the table, uh, try to have uh, two crazy eight sheets on the table. And again, we're going to have uh, uh, eight minutes for each for, uh, for this exercise. Um, yeah, let's get started. Yeah, maybe just to clarify, because everyone, can we have uh, attention here, please? Crazy Eights? Hey, hello, thank you very much. Crazy Eights is a bit of an abstract one, so you need to understand it well. It's also the most fun one. And the idea is that you make a sketch of your idea. It can be like a, a drawing, it can be a diagram. It has to fit on a post-it, so it has to be really succinct. And you're actually going to make eight very rapid iterations. So we're going to do very strict timekeeping. After one minute, you, you leave that post-it alone, you move on to the next one. So each table only has about two or three of those sheets. So we actually need two or three people on the table to step forward. Maybe someone who's good at drawing, <laughs> because this requires some drawing skills. And when everyone's ready, probably in like two minutes or so, make sure you make some room on your table, get the drawers uh, prepared. And then we're going to do eight short uh, cycles of one minute where you just draw and you iterate on one idea. And of course, the idea is that you use all of the previous stuff as inspiration for this single solution that you're going to draw. Let's take two minutes to get organized, and then we're actually going to start with the one-minute cycle. So uh, let's get ready. Another good uh, thing to know, the nice thing about Crazy Eights is it activates your subconscious to, to, to participate in the, in the creative process. So really trust that. Just pick something, if you're not sure yet, just pick something and just go for it. Let's just create a solution. Yes. So to clarify, every minute you make a new version of the same idea. So you basically have eight versions of the same idea. All right, everyone. Attention, please. We're, are, we are about to start. So um, once again, I hope you're ready. We're going to start the timer in a few seconds. We need a, few, need a few more minutes, I think. Okay. Okay. I think we should just start. Let's just go for it. Make sure that every sheet has one person who is going to make the drawings. You pick one idea that you're going to try and explain in a drawing. And you just use one of the boxes to try and draw it. And you have one minute to do so. After one minute, you move on to the next box and you try again. And you have eight versions of the same drawing, basically. We are going to start the timer in three, two, one, start.
Start drawing. It can be a user interface, it can be a drawing, it can be a diagram. As long as it explains the solution that, you're work that you've been working on. 10 seconds remaining for the first drawing. I'll leave you to it. Keep going. In a few minutes, we'll move on to a discussion. All right, everyone. Let's, uh, let's do a quick pause here. So we are uh, nearing the end of the workshop. And the idea is that you still have some time. You have eight minutes in total to prepare your solution and, and your explanation to other tables. So in short, in eight minutes, I'm going to ask each of the tables to share your biggest takeaway or like the TLDR or maybe anything that you're struggling with. Just try and give some kind of abstract of the value that you've been creating and try to share it with another table. I'll give you eight minutes to prepare that. And then we still have some time to cross pollinate between the tables. Good luck. All right, everyone, let's uh, take a moment here. Let's take a moment here. Please assign one person on your table that's going to, uh, to do the talking. And the idea is, if it's correct, each table has been assigned another table that they're going to talk to. And you're just going to explain what you came up with. It can be a TLDR of your idea. It can be the main takeaway. It can also be, if, you, if you've been struggling, just share like the main uh, challenges that you ran into. Assign one person and then we're going to take time to explain it to the other table. Uh, let's go. Lovely people, we're going to be kicked out in one minute. So I'd like to ask you to wrap up. Make sure you hand your final drawing to the challenge owner so they can make a picture of it. And most importantly, don't forget to mint your POAP by scanning the QR code. Dear friends, we're going to be kicked out. Thank you very much for your energy, for your participation. Round of applause. You've been fantastic. I hope we're going to find some gems in the output. We'll figure it out over the next few hours. Thanks a lot. Don't forget your POAP and have a great conference.